Hey guys, it's Christopher, and this is video number 20 of the Solaris Basics tutorial playlist, which is a progressive series of video. Um, in this tutorial, I will explain how to move things. And I'm saying things on purpose because um, you can move various types of objects, not only objects that are on the map, so map entities, but also uh, directly images for example. Um, but it will become clear with the two examples covered in this video. The first example will be to just move this character. So I'm, r I'm using again a, a map of previous tutorials but you can very well uh, create any non-playing character with the type human somebody and yeah so let's try to move her and this is done from Lua and again don't forget to read the documentation there is a type movement here and more exactly there are nine types of movement depending on what you want. Some of them are uh, better suited for non-playing characters, some of them are better for enemies. Um, so you can read all of them, but for non-playing characters it's usually random path, which means that they walk randomly in the four main directions. That's what we want. The two most important functions are sol.movement.create to create a movement object and then start to start the movement object uh, on some target. In this example we are going to associate it to the non-playing character. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, let's get back to our map script. When do we want to start the movement? Well, when when the map starts at initialization time. So in the map on started event. Um, we need access to her, so she needs to have a name. I called her villager. So let's. Oops. Okay, let's create the movement first. can call the variable like you want sol.movement.create and then oops no movement type can be one of these and we said random path random path okay the second step once you created a movement of some type is to configure your movement so if you go see the random pass movement documentation, you can unfold actually movements here. And you have all of them detailed. Actually the documentation gives uh, essentially the example we are I, mean, I am currently showing to you guys. So uh, we created the movement object. The second step is to configure it. So in this type of movement, we, you can configure the speed. But let's keep the speed, the default speed, because actually it's fine for NPCs. This type of mov movement is really designed for NPCs. And the third step is to associate our movement on something, to start the movement on something. Because here we only created a movement object so to do this you do movement start and then you specify the target movement start object to move so actually it can be a map entity so uh, remember that map entities are anything that have coordinates on the map npcs 
uh, enemies, even the hero himself, if you want. It's a bit trickier because the hero has def a default movement controlled by the player. So you, you uh, this is not the the most usual usage usage of movements. Usually it's for non-playing characters and enemies. Okay, so villager because it's her name. Remember villager here. So from the map script we can access it with a variable that has the the name that we chose here. So she needs to have a name. And well, only these two lines and it should be enough. Okay. And she notes that she magically um her, her sprite magically animates with a walking animation and she also looks in the same direction uh, she, um, of the movement as the movement. If you remember the previous tutorial it's because she has the subtype usual NPC somebody so she has some default behavior as, I, as the behavior I just described so she she will look in the direction of the movement whenever there is a movement and also the sprite will be animated with a walking animation whenever she is walking um, woman yellow yeah so the sprite must have a stopped animation and a walking animation and they must have four directions okay for human NPCs Otherwise, what I just showed will not work correctly. And if you don't want the default this automatic behavior, you say generalized NPC, and she will still move according to the movement. But nothing special, uh, nothing at all, even will be done on her sprite if she has one. So, usual NPC, somebody. Okay. And of course, if you talk to her, she stops the movement. Oops. Something is wrong here. Did I remove the code? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, there is no interaction. Um, well. That's unfortunate. Let's just um, show a dialogue. The same as the receptionist. Or the same as the sign. <laughs> Welcome sign. It's just for the example. I think it was this. If you talk to her, her movement is suspended. Our sprite is suspended as well, like the one of the hero, by the way. And then she continues. Okay. Note that by default, uh, human NPCs can traverse each other, but they cannot traverse generalized NPCs because these ones are considered solid. But uh, okay, this tutorial is not about NPCs. Uh, so random path and you have a lot of other types of movements let's try for example um, target movement target target movement oh she's targeting me um, <laughs> and she's really really fast Target movement is more for enemies, and there is a set target function that takes either an entity or some coordinates, and by default, the initial target is the hero. But uh, to make it clearer, set target hero, 
and maybe a slower speed. So the speed is always in pixels per second. So 64 should be enough. Oh, something's wrong here. Oh, is the hero variable not not the string hero? Okay, so she really behaves like an enemy now, or like a crazy woman who's <laughs> who's after me. And only she can traverse the other one. Yes. So it's a direct target movement. So she computes a rectilinear trajectory towards you and she's not really good at avoiding obstacles. Okay. If you want to avoid obstacles, there is also the uh, the pathfinding movement. So this is less usual for enemies but uh, I can show you that it exists and this time she will calculate a path okay <laughs> she's really good okay nice so again three steps you create the, mov the movement you configure it and then you start it on an object Um, okay, let's see the second example. So, as I said at the beginning of the video, um, you can start a movement on a map entity, but also on other stuff like drawable objects. Drawable objects are surfaces, text surfaces, and sprites, or even a table. Um, but uh, you can read the documentation for more details. But in the second example, we will try to move an image, a surface. Okay. Close, close, close. Let's modify the Solaris logo menu. So it's a menu that we see in the first few seconds and it's animated. So I don't really have the time to show you completely but you have it in your quest normally. Um, for this example, we will really simplify it, actually. So, if you read the description of the video, you will find an image to download. So, extract, and in sprites menus, you can put this, if you want to reproduce the tutorial. Sorry, it's logo full.png image. We will replace the animated logo by a much simpler animation, which will be this image um, going down like this, boom, and then um, we start the game. <laughs> okay, so it's a tr 320 by um, 240 pixels image, so it, it will occupy the full screen. It, I mean, it, it will cover entirely the screen of the game. The default logo, the real logo animated one, is comes from this PNG image. So it's in several pieces and there is a, a complex animation with all this code. So we will really really simplify this. Re we just remove almost everything and just load our PNG image. So if you remember the tutorial about showing an image, it's the same thing. It was tutorial number 17. Cell.surface.create and then the name, the file name relative to the sprites directory. Solaris logo full PNG. And then we just create an event on the menu, the onDraw event. So every time the menu is redrawn by the engine, 
we take the logo PNG image and we draw we draw it onto the destination surface. So basically on the screen. And don't forget to put this outside the on draw function because this is called repeatedly like normally 50 times per second I think <laughs> so okay now I have a fixed logo and I cannot actually start the game because we never finish we never stop the the menu so if you want to stop the menu own key pressed and no matter which key is pressed Actually, maybe we uh, we do. Maybe it's important. Maybe we want to do it only if the key is space. Then we stop the menu. And we return true to indicate that we handled the event. Okay. And um, remember that it's main.lua that started the logo menu here, Solaris logo. And it's also main.lua that decided what to do then. Unfinished, we start the game. Okay. So, and now if I press space, it works. And she's still crazy. Ugh. I don't want the crazy woman. She scares me. Where is it? Here. Just random path. Please. And maybe a speed of 48. I think 48 should be the default speed. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe she's a bit quicker than the default speed. So the default speed must be 32 then. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> That's better. She looks like a peaceful, nice person now. Okay, okay. Um. So what we wanted was to move the logo, the uh, the logo here, the image. So we started above, and it will go down to this position. And, and then we start the game. So to do this, actually, we want to draw it instead of at zero zero, which are the default coordinates. We want to draw this at zero minus the height of the screen, two hundred and forty. So if you do this, you no longer see the image because it is it would be above. But the idea is to create a movement, so of course I create the movement outside, I don't want to create a new movement at each frame. So movement create of type, so this time it's a straight movement, um, a rectilinear trajectory. So this is probably the simplest type of movement, just a rectilinear trajectory with some angle and some speed and also some maximum distance. A straight movement of speed, uh, let's try 64 and the angle so this function expects an angle in radians as always zero means right and then we circle counterclockwise like in uh, trigonometry in mathematics okay so but if you don't know uh, everything is explained here south is 3 pi uh, divided by 2 3 pi over 2 okay and um, Okay, and start the movement on the 
surface. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Again, three steps. We create the movement, we configure the movement, and we start it on some object. We still draw it at those coordinates because actually it will be drawn at those coordinates plus any modification made by the movement, if there is a, a movement. So the movement acts like an offset applied to all the drawings of the object. Ooh, it works, but it's a bit slow and it doesn't stop. So maybe this speed, 128, I like powers of 2. And, and yes, you should also stop it. And to do this, there is a max set max distance function and it will be 240, the height of the screen. Okay, nice. And then you press space. And one more thing, maybe you want to automatically start the game when the logo reaches the destination here. And to do that, it's actually very similar to dialogues and to a lot of function of the Solaris API. When you do movement start, there is this optional second parameter, a value of type function. So you pass some code to the engine and the engine will call the code back when the movement finishes. So, um, when the movement finishes, what do you want to do? Actually, the same, th same thing as here. Stop the menu. So that the game can start. Okay, I didn't press anything this time, trust me. So it works. And by the way, um, I decided to put all this code outside any function here, so in the script itself. It's exactly equivalent to to this unstarted so it's really as you prefer because when the I mean no it's not it's not exactly equivalent because the script is yes, the script is uh called with require so yep. so this is a bit wrong <laughs> actually because this code would be called only once so if the game ever resets or something like that you you come back to the menu, to the Solaris logo for some reason, the movement will not be started again. So uh, actually it's not equivalent, oops. You really want to put it on in unstart in here. But this can stay outside, don't need to reload uh, uh, the PNG file every time the Solaris logo menu is, is started. Well, in this case, it probably doesn't matter because we are sure that Solaris logo is shown only once. But uh, as a good practice, you need to. It's better to understand the difference and, and to uh, and to do it correctly. Okay. So unstarted. Okay. But um, as far as movement are concerned, are concerned, I think uh, I've covered 
most of yeah I covered what I wanted to cover here so again you have a lot of moment types you can try them they all have their own properties their their own get and set functions and some properties are common to all movement like set ignore obstacles and uh, yeah very important always this this three three steps you create the movement you set some properties and you start it on some object it can be a map entity or something more general like uh, a drawable object okay and that's all for now uh, see you next time take care bye